On this episode of the Left Bench TV, a closer look at a college park legend who's been at the top of her game for over three decades. Also, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Maryland star lacrosse player, Jared Bernhardt. And a Friday night football game under the lights in College Park for his Big Ten rival, Penn State. The Left Bench TV starts now. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Left Bench TV, your sideline source for all the latest Maryland sports action. I'm James Mahoney. And I'm Rachel Hersheimer. This past week, all you could hear was University of Maryland students counting down the days until the Friday Night Lights game against Big Ten foe Penn State. That's right, Rachel. Not only were students excited for Friday, but Terps fans as well. Tickets were sold out for the first time since 2015. But all the hype from the stands just wasn't able to translate onto the field, with Maryland falling to the Nittany Lions 59-0. And our Connor Leff was there with the recap about what went wrong for the Terps. It was a Friday night under the lights for the Maryland Terps football team, who took on Big Ten rival Penn State in front of a home sold-out crowd. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Connor Leff, and despite the electric atmosphere, the Terps could not get anything going on either side of the ball, falling to the Nittany Lions 59 to nothing. After a day of no classes, the Maryland students came in full force to support their Terps against Penn State. It was the Nittany Lions who struck first. Following an interception, Sean Clifford takes it in himself to start the scoring off for the Nittany Lions. Next drive, Sean Clifford finds KJ Hamler over the middle and he is off to the races making defenders miss left and right, taking it all the way into the end zone. Penn State up 14-0. Maryland trying to get on the board here, but it is intercepted at the goal line. Maryland struggling to score points, and Penn State just kept on rolling. Clifford here again, rolls out and dumps it off to his running back, Journey Brown, who takes it in the open field all the way into the end zone. Penn State tallied 619 total yards of offense while Maryland managed only 128. Much of that due to the pressure of the Lions defense forcing the fumble here. Terps lose 59-0. We have the 24-hour rule and for us it's win or lose. We, it takes 24 hours. We got to get it digested out of our system. As a coaching staff, we got to get on top of the tape, figure out uh, what, what went wrong. Um, obviously, you know, when you look at the stat sheet, we got you know, I want to say our first 15 to 20 plays, we had four or five penalties. We had two turnovers. We gave up two big explosive plays. So, um, you know, right from the start, we, we, we didn't give ourselves a chance. And for us, uh, that was the disappointing part. The Terps will look to get back on track when they hit the road to take on Rutgers this Saturday. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Connor Love. The loss also came with looming questions about senior wide receiver DJ Turner, who was notably not playing in Friday's loss, and fans, they took notice. According to the state's judiciary case search, Turner was charged on September 20th with driving while under the influence of alcohol, along with reckless driving, disobeying an officer, and numerous other traffic violations. Maryland head coach Mike Loxley spoke after the game Friday night on the decision to bench Turner. As you notice, DJ Turner didn't play today. Uh, it was my decision to uh, not play DJ. DJ uh, has to focus on uh, the non-football things right now. I won't get into uh, or comment on anything uh, further on that uh, until I have more information. But uh, it was the coach's decision not to play DJ today. And uh, again, we want him to focus on the non-football things. The left bench will keep you updated about any new findings from this ongoing investigation. The Maryland women's soccer team hasn't had much luck on the road against ranked teams, but that all changed after Saturday's game against 20th ranked Rutgers. Terps taking the trip up I-95 with a 1-1 record so far in conference play and quickly found a 1-0 lead by way of Alyssa Porch, her team leading sixth goal of the season. Maryland would press on and double their lead as Hope Lewandowski slammed home a loose ball in the box just 12 minutes after Porch's goal. Terps took a 2-0 lead into halftime, but Rutgers would draw one goal back past the hour mark in the match. That one goal, though, would be all the Scarlet Knights could get. Maryland goalie and New Jersey native Aaron Seppi made five saves on the night to deliver the Terps their first road win against a ranked opponent since 2014. 
Maryland has now won against ranked opponents in back-to-back -back seasons. The Terps hit the road again on Thursday to take on Ohio State. And James, staying in New Jersey, the Maryland field hockey team took on number 18 Rutgers Saturday afternoon after coming off an overtime win against 10th ranked Princeton last Tuesday. The Terps leading scorer Linda Cabano started off the game hot with back-to-back -back goals in the first half of play against the Scarlet Knights. In the 48th minute, Rutgers scored the first goal of the second half, but as play picked up, Maryland was flying past the opposing defense. Terps outshot the Scarlet Knights 17-9, beating Rutgers 2-1. Maryland has now won every matchup against Rutgers since 1999. And for her efforts, Linda Cabano has earned a Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week honors after tallying eight points in the Terps' wins against the Scarlet Knights and Princeton. The Terps are now 10 games into another season, which has been defined by a lot of turnover. But one thing remains constant for the field hockey program, head coach Missy Mahard. Our Noah Gross took a closer look at what sets the veteran coach apart from the competition. 32 years coaching and seven national titles will earn you some high praise. She makes you love this place. She's always just there supporting us. Missy Maharg has been at the helm of the Maryland field hockey program since 1988. For players like junior Brooke DeBurdine, it's pretty clear the veteran head coach has her back. When Missy talks like during um, like half times and stuff or before games, it's just like a trust that like I have with her and like I think most of the athletes like share that we like know that she believes in us. Maharg has done it all in her time at Maryland, including winning 25 conference titles. But she still loves every second of coaching in College Park. I think that this field is very sacred. Uh, the opportunity to uh, live through your sport, and in particular field hockey, that's what bonds us all together, whether you're from the state of Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, or, or uh, the Netherlands. Um, we're all together as one. Now on this field is where Missy has led so many great teams to countless accolades, but if you ask anybody around the program, they will tell you that all the success on the field comes with the family atmosphere and the culture that she creates off of it. Well, it just makes us so comfortable like to be there. We know that she's always going to have us ba have our back no matter what happens like both on and off the field. So it means that we can really perform because we're just happy to be ourselves and she supports us the whole way. And while Maharg is not done yet, she's able to reflect about the lives she's changed. What I'll remember the most is when they get it, when the light bulb goes on and they sustain it. Um, so an action over time is done and it becomes a way of their being. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Noah Gross. Maharg and the Terps now head to Evanston to play number seven Northwestern Thursday at 3.30. From one legendary coach to another, Sasha Swarovski's men's soccer team looking to bounce back from a loss in their Big Ten opener to Northwestern. First Monday night, a non-conference match against ninth-ranked St. John's at Ludwig. Early in the first half, an opportunity for the Terps off a corner, Ben DeRosa's shot deflected wide. Missed chances or a lack of chances thereof a theme in this one until the 109th minute. Matt DeRosa puts it in a dangerous area and Brett St. Martin deflects it past the keeper Terps win in double OT, 1-0. Friday night, back to Big Ten play. Maryland and Madison to take on Wisconsin. A little rain delay, but the teams eventually got on the pitch, and while the Terps controlled possession early, midfielder Malcolm Johnston got sent off right before the end of the first half. The Terps, though, were able to hang on, down a man for over 70 minutes to a scoreless draw. Terps return to action Wednesday night under the light at Ludwig Field against Rutgers. Both teams are looking for their first conference win. And the volleyball team opened on the road Big Ten play Saturday in East Lansing, where they fell to Michigan State in three straight sets. Something just wasn't clicking for Adam Hughes' team. Maryland only had 32 kills, six blocks, and did not register a single ace. Rebecca Rath, who has been a key new asset on the hardwood for Maryland, only secured 10 kills. Not the performance we have been seeing from the freshman. The Terps ended the match with a .087 hitting percentage, one of the lowest from the team this season. Michigan State shut out Maryland 3-0. But the Terps, they don't stop there. They'll be back in the pavilion hosting the Michigan Wolverines Friday night with some possible offensive changes in order. Maryland is also hosting their Dig Pink game to raise funds for breast cancer awareness Saturday night against Michigan State. Now, following a controversial end to their 2019 campaign, Maryland's men's lacrosse is back for revenge ahead of the 2020 season. TLB TV's Kevin Brown sat down with senior Jared Bernhardt for the latest installment of Between Two Terps. 
We now welcome on Star Attackman Jared Barnhart onto the show. Jared, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Jared, first we got to start off with the mustache. What's the inspiration? Who started it first, Jake or you? I'm going to say me. Jake did it probably a couple years ago, but I had it this summer, in the beginning of the summer before he had it. So I'm going to say me just because it's present right now. Oh, is he present here? And right after practice in the fall here, Jared, how's it feel to be back? It's great. Um, no place like College Park. Uh, have a great group of guys um, trying to, you know, get the younger guys situated, which is awesome. But, you know, love it. And let's go to you. You obviously announced uh, you're going to play football after this year. What's that? What went into that decision? And just a few words on that. Yeah, um, you know, always played football when I was younger. Uh, between me and my dad, we kind of started talking about it a few years ago. Um, probably going to decide before the season. Um, I think sometime in the winter, um, hopefully, you know, I go back uh, for you know winter break, um, talk with my family a little bit, and discuss that. Your dad, obviously, a big inspiration in mm -hmm. that, a big mentor to you and your brothers mm -hmm. here. Jake, a new PLL champion, Jesse on top of the MLL and coaching you yeah. today. And do you want to go professionally lacrosse-wise mm -hmm. after your year of football? Yes, I think I think I would like to continue doing that. Um, like I said, still deciding what I want to do and after school I'm going to do the grad year, um, kind of see where that takes me. Um, but, yeah, you know, lacrosse will always have kind of a place for me. Um, but I think – you know, in the long run, I'd like to, you know, continue playing at, you know, some point. All right, quick rapid fire section here. A lot of questions. Let's get a couple uh, answers for some teammates here. Right. First off, who's got the best flow on the team? Um, I'm going to say freshman uh, Jack Sawyer, I would say. Him or Anthony DeMeo. Yeah. yeah. Best dancer? Best dancer, I would probably say Will Plansky. Best on the Ox? Uh, Russell Massey. And best mustache? I'm gonna. G I'll give it to Anthony DeMeo because he uh, he kind of got me into doing it too. He kind of. We have a little kind of little bet, you know, that we would kind of keep it going. So I'll say I'll say Anthony. All right. Thanks so much, Jared. Thank you. And that's sure. all from College Park. Back to you guys. Now Bernhardt will look to lead the Terps back to the Final Four when Maryland Lacrosse gets back to action in February as they continue to gain chemistry during their fall season. And James, even though the Terps did struggle a little bit these past two weeks, there still were some great plays that came out of the past two weeks. Absolutely. Let's take a look at those. Let's head to our top five plays. Starting things off, number five sophomore Katie Myers with a huge kill against Ohio State. She had 14 in that game. Number four, Alyssa Porch. How good has she been this, good, this year? Slotting home the opener against Minnesota. The bench loves it. Terps win 2-0. And on to number three, freshman defensive back Nick Cross. Look at this, here he comes with the diving interception trying to turn things around for the Terps. Now number two, you saw this one just a bit earlier in the show. Terps taking on the number nine team in the country. Maryland just getting the ball into a dangerous spot there and Brett St. Martin slotting home the game winner. And I'd say that calls for a dog pile. That is awesome. And now heading over to the field hockey and lacrosse complex. Number one, LePage finds Coast at the top to Cabano, waiting at the net, Cabano to Bon, and she makes the goal. Look at this with 0.6 seconds left in the game. Let's roll that again. Watch how the ball hits Bon's stick twice, and then finally making its way to the back of the net. And we head back to the pitch at Ludwig for our Terp of the Week. It's men's soccer sophomore Brett St. Martin. He has been a solid part of the Terps defense this season, and last Monday he scored a goal in the 108th minute to lift the Terps to a 1-0 victory of then undefeated St. John's. He's also helped keep a shutout in a draw with Wisconsin last Friday. Now, it wasn't a great start to the weekend for the Terps on the gridiron, but one pro Terp had a superstar performance Sunday. Patriots cornerback and Maryland alum J.C. Jackson had quite the Sunday making multiple key plays as you see him make the interception here. One of his two on the day, plus a punt block that resulted in a touchdown for New England. Have you seen the most recent under the radar list featuring the top 10 college freshman female tennis players? Well, if you have it, Maryland fans, listen up because number 10 belongs to the Terps. Before coming to Maryland, Ayana Akil was the number 21 recruit coming out of high school and named Washington Post All-Met Player of the Year prior to her arrival on the College Park courts. 
She comes from a family of athletes. Her dad, he's a tennis coach. Her mom played basketball for RPI. And this weekend, Ayana was undefeated at the Hall of Fame Classic and helped secure a doubles title for the Terps in Williamsburg. And it'll be interesting to see how she grows. I mean, she's only a freshman, so I can't even imagine what she could do as a senior. Exactly, and I'm sure Maryland fans will be looking forward to seeing her on the court. But won't, there won't only be fresh faces on the courts, but in the dugout as well. Losses, injuries, and transfers. That's what Maryland softball's team has been facing these past couple of seasons. But the team looks to turn things around. After the resignation of head coach Julie Wright, the Terps have signed on a new face to lead their program. Our Connor Left caught up with new head coach Mark Montgomery on his prior experience, new ideas for the team, and how he'll take Maryland softball to the next level. I'm here with new head Maryland softball coach Mark Montgomery. Coach, so after leading Louisiana Tech last year to a conference championship in 45 wins, what do you think you can bring to this Maryland squad this year? Well, I, I hope I bring some experience and just some structure and in terms of a, you know, a style of play and, and something that they'll be able to rally around and, and get better. So now you're co it's your 20th season coaching collegiately. What kind of experience have you had over those 20 years that have shaped you as a coach? Well, you know, I've, I've really taken a, a path up. I mean, I had to stop in high school before even college and, and kind of every step along the way has prepared me for, you know, who I'm going to be as a coach and uh, as the pre you know, the commercial says, I, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. <laughs> and so what approach are you going to bring here for both the hitters of the Maryland softball team and the pitchers? Well, for hitters, I would tell you we're, we want to be disciplined at the plate. Uh, we want to definitely uh, uh, have more walks than strikeouts. Uh, I also want to uh, lead the conference in doubles. Uh, so certainly that means a lot of uh, extra base hits. Again, if we can command the strike zone, we'll be fine. And, and then that's truthfully what we do for pitchers. They need to command the strike zone. We get ahead of batters. Uh, first and second pitches need to be a lot of strikes. Thank you, Coach, and welcome to Maryland. Absolutely. Go Terps. And even though the season hasn't officially started, the softball team is playing seven games this fall. The next matchup in College Park is on Friday, October 11th at 5 p.m., and admission is free. Now, Rachel, that's my first time hearing from head coach Mark Montgomery. I'm really excited to see how he'll lead this program. He sure seems like a home run. I mean, his resume is stacked. I mean, he's going to do great things for the Maryland softball program. And that's all we have for this edition of the Left Bench TV. Thanks for watching. I'm Rachel Hersheimer. And I'm James Mahoney. Be sure to keep up with all of our coverage on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Left Bench. We'll see you next time.